The preponderance and variety of data that is available to today's enterprises is opening up tremendous opportunities across many industries. Organizations increasingly have access to a treasure trove of structured and unstructured data that can lead to keen insights on aspects of the business to help them remain competitive. Moreover, the capability to derive the insight that is necessary to make critical business decisions rapidly is where analytics come into play. Doing this requires a solution that is low latency, low cost, and low in complexity. It also requires high quality service and performance, as well as effective data governance and security. To meet these demands, IBM provides the IBM DB2 Analytics Accelerator for ZOS, a high performance appliance that enables offloading certain types of SQL queries on behalf of DB2 for ZOS. When an application submits an SQL query, DB2 will analyze it. If query acceleration is enabled and the query qualifies for acceleration, DB2 will route it to the accelerator. The Analytics Accelerator completes the query execution and sends the results back to DB2, which then sends it out to the application. This offloading process is transparent to end users of your applications and no application changes are required. The DB2 Analytics Accelerator for ZOS can be deployed to achieve extremely fast results for complex and data-intensive queries for data warehouses, business intelligence, and analytics workloads. Organizations can also take advantage of this acceleration with the integration of IBM DB2 and Infosphere Optum data lifecycle management tools. DB2 Query Monitor for ZOS provides capabilities to monitor, identify, and segregate accelerated and non-accelerated queries. This tool can be used to measure and compare performance for the same queries with and without acceleration. Version 4101 of IBM Infosphere Optum Query Workload Tuner for DB2 for ZOS, or OQWT for short, is an extension to the IBM Data Studio and offers expert tuning advice for query workloads across DB2 for ZOS environments, including advanced expert advice for accelerating queries. Beyond monitoring and analysis capabilities for DB2 for ZOS and applications, the DB2 Tivoli Omegamon XE for DB2 Performance Expert on ZOS tool can be used to generate extensive performance reports. These reports offer insight to the behavior of the accelerated queries and appliance utilization, which helps validate the return on investment for acceleration and identify performance trends. DB2 Object Comparison Tool for ZOS, an extension to the DB2 Administration Tool for ZOS version 11.1, .1, provides comprehensive accelerator management capabilities, including adding and removing accelerators and an option to reload data through change management. Finally, IBM Analytics Accelerator Loader for ZOS provides flexible capabilities and options to quickly load or refresh DB2 or non-DB2 data, either directly into the DB2 Analytics Accelerator or DB2 for ZOS, or both in parallel. Either way, the load or refresh takes place with minimal application impact while helping to reduce processor consumption and elapsed time. In this video, we will show how an organization can use some of these DB2 and Optum database tools to improve performance for analytics workloads. In this scenario, the IT team wants to use the IBM DB2 Analytics Accelerator for ZOS to accelerate their analytics applications. They will do this in four main steps. One, run the workload and use Query Monitor to monitor its performance and then push the query workload to InfoSphere Query Workload Tuner for tuning. Two, run the Workload Analytics Accelerator Advisor in OQWT, follow its advice, and offload statements to an accelerator. Three, load data to the accelerator. And four, run the workload and use Query Monitor to compare workload performance before and after acceleration. Let's start with Query Monitor. After the workload has been run, the DBA logs onto Query Monitor's Activity Browser dashboard and creates a filter to drill down to the SQL statements for the analytics application workload. 
First, the DBA chooses the interval when the workload ran in DB2, selects the DB2 subsystem on which the workload ran, selects the workload plan, and drills down to SQL statements. The DBA sorts the SQL statements by the elapsed time and analyzes the performance data that is provided for each one. The DBA clicks on the Show SQL button to see more details on the selected statement, including delays, locks, buffer pool, and analysis on the elapsed time. Finally, the DBA clicks on the Tune All button to push these SQL statements to OQWT for tuning takes the default QM as the prefix for the workload name and clicks OK to continue. The SQL statements are captured as a new workload in OQWT's Manage section. The name uses QM as the prefix, followed by the year and date timestamp. The DBA runs the Workload Statistics Advisor to generate run stat statements for updating the statistics of the objects that these SQL statements reference. The other advisors rely on current statistics because they base their analysis on explain information. In this example, the statistics are current. The DBA is ready to run the Workload Analytics Acceleration Advisor. After the Analytics Advisor completes, the DBA looks at the recommendations. This page is divided into three sections. The top section is the Estimates of Performance Improvements. The first number is the total estimated savings in seconds for offloading all eligible statements to an accelerator. This is the estimated number of seconds by which performance would improve if the DBA offloaded all eligible statements and ran the workload again. The second number is the savings in total accumulated CPU time in seconds on DB2 for the executions of all eligible statements in the workload because they will be executed on the analytics accelerator instead of DB2. The middle section shows the list of tables referenced by the workload. By default, this table shows all of the recommended tables to offload to an accelerator for maximum benefit. The DBA can click on the drop-down filter to see tables that are not recommended to be added to an accelerator or tables that are recommended for removal from an accelerator. The On Accelerator column indicates whether a table is already on an accelerator. The References to Table column indicates the number of times this table is referenced by the eligible statements and the accumulated estimated cost gives the sum of all eligible statements which reference this table. The bottom section shows the list of SQL statements in the workload. This section has three subsections. The Eligible Statements subsection lists all statements in the workload that are eligible for offloading to an accelerator, with estimated cost and CPU time for each of the statements. The Ineligible Statements subsection lists all of the statements that are not eligible for offloading to an accelerator. The furthest column to the right shows why they are not eligible. The Rewritable Statements subsection lists all of the statements that are currently ineligible but could be rewritten for eligibility. The furthest column to the right shows why they are currently ineligible. The DBA sees that the Workload Analytics Acceleration Advisor recommends adding a large number of tables to an accelerator. So the DBA wonders whether the estimated CPU savings will decrease significantly if some tables are not added to the accelerator. To find out, the DBA clicks the Test Candidate Analytics Acceleration button. 
From the list of recommended tables, the DBA deselects two tables and then clicks a button to run the Workload Analytics Acceleration Advisor. The results of the test show that estimated savings are very small compared to the original figures, and so excluding the deselected tables from an accelerator would not deliver the performance benefits that are required for the data warehouse. We could continue this test by deselecting other tables. In this example, the DBA decides to implement the original recommendations and clicks the Add Recommended Tables to Accelerator button. In the Add Tables to Accelerator dialog, the DBA selects the accelerator, clicks the Add Tables to Accelerator button, and receives the confirmation message indicating that OQWT created the tables on the accelerator, but they are empty. The DBA needs to load data into them and enable them for query acceleration. You can use either the basic Accelerator Studio or the more sophisticated Accelerator Loader to load data. In this example, we will show how this can be done with the Accelerator Studio. In Data Studio, the DBA opens the Accelerator perspective, expands the connected subsystem, selects the Accelerator's folder, highlights the Accelerator on which the tables were defined, and then clicks the Manage icon. In the page that opens, the DBA expands the schema in which the tables are located. The DBA selects all of the tables, right-clicks them, and then selects Load. The Load Tables panel is shown. The DBA accepts the defaults for the options in this dialog and clicks OK. The tables are loaded. After the loading completes, the tables are automatically enabled for acceleration. Next, the DBA runs the workload again and looks at Query Monitor to observe the performance data after acceleration. First, the DBA clicks Compare and chooses the interval that represents the baseline when the workload ran in DB2. And the compared interval during which the workload ran accelerated. The DBA also uses the predefined filter to show only the workload's plan name of DSNTEP2. The row status of retained indicates that this workload existed in both the baseline and the compared intervals. The zeros in the execution count and SQL calls columns indicate that there were the same number of SQL statement executions and calls in both intervals. The elapsed time column indicates the difference in execution times for the compared and the baseline intervals. In this example, the entire workload has improved from 49 minutes to 34 minutes, or 30%, with acceleration. Note that there are other statements not eligible for acceleration, as we saw in OQWT. The DBA can hover over the cells to get more information about the data in each one. Next, the DBA drills down further to individual statements in the workload to see the exact improvement for each of the accelerated SQL statements. In this example, one statement has improved from 12 minutes to 4 seconds, or 99%, with acceleration. The DBA can also see the performance comparison as a percentage instead of absolute values. In this case, using acceleration resulted in a percentage improvement from 99% to 70%, as shown here. Next, the DBA drills down on the accelerator. The first row is for the compared interval, which was accelerated, and the second row is for the baseline, which was not. The row status of added indicates that the compared interval has some statements executed with acceleration, which were not in the original baseline. The row status of retained indicates that there are some statements that ran in DB2 in both the compared and the baseline intervals. In this example, there were 131 executions from the workload that ran in the accelerator instead of DB2. In summary, you have learned how database administrators can capitalize on DB2 Analytics Accelerator for ZOS and the supporting DB2 and Infosphere Optum database tools 
to optimize and accelerate analytic queries to meet the ever-increasing velocity of business insight needs. In this scenario, we showed you how to use Query Monitor to analyze and push query workloads to OQWT for performance tuning and compare the performance data during two intervals. With OQWT, you can quickly analyze a workload and its query access paths to determine which set of SQL statements should be offloaded, along with the related tables that should be added to an accelerator. In addition, before implementing the offload, you can get the estimated cost savings and the estimated performance improvement. For more information, visit us on the web as shown here.